In this video I'm going to be fixing a smashed up phone screen on the cheap. Will I succeed? Let's find out. Now although the screen itself is completely smashed, the phone works fine and the LCD panel also is okay. It's just the glass on top which has the digitizer which detects your finger presses that is just completely gone so it doesn't detect anything. It's essentially dead and unusable. So this is going to be a bit of an experiment really to see whether it's possible to replace just the glass and not the LCD panel because that will allow me to keep the original LCD rather than a cheaper lower quality replacement. So the first thing to do is power off the phone and obviously because the touchscreen doesn't work I'm going to use a USB OTG cable. This can simply be plugged into the side and then a computer mouse can be used to power off the device. So with that done we now need a set of tools. Now, these can be found online for very cheap. Mine were about four pounds, which is about six dollars or so. And uh, I'll put links in the description to a set like this for your convenience. Now we'll also need a pretty powerful hairdryer. And we're going to use this to soften the adhesive that's holding the phone together to make it easier to disassemble. So I'm just going to put it on maximum heat. I'm just going to put it all around the phone just to heat up the back. It's been about two minutes now and uh, it's time to try and pry it off. So I'm going to just shove this little metal thing underneath and uh, now I can move on to the plastic tools. And the idea with these is that they are designed so that they can't go too far in so that they won't damage anything like a ribbon cable or, or something like that on the inside. Uh, palm, one, yes. So the next thing to do here is just to disconnect the battery and pull it out. I've also got to unplug various ribbon cables at the bottom here and also remove you know bits of plastic and things until I reach the screen cable. Now this needs to be very very carefully unplugged so that when I remove the screen later it uh, will be able to come free. Okay so now with the back all free with the panel and digitizer disconnected it's time to remove the screen and this is going to be the toughest part of this project because as the screen is just so shattered it means that um, if I were to pry it off just like we did the back it would crumble away and uh, that could potentially damage the panel that's attached to it. Uh, so what I want to do is potentially a little bit crazy it's either crazy or a stroke of genius, I'm not sure which yet. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is gluing on a piece of aluminium to the glass to support it whilst I prise it off. And uh, to do this I'm going to be using some epoxy. And uh, another thing I need to do is bung up the speaker grills so that the glue doesn't glue onto the sort of fabric thing that's underneath. So now I've just got to leave this to dry. And now that it's dry, I'm just using the hair dryer to heat up the aluminium, which should in turn heat up the adhesive that's holding the screen in place. Ah, this does not look good. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so that's not worked at all. Um, the glue has just not adhered to all of the glass and it's just pulled away a few of the shards. I think one of the reasons why the glue didn't stick properly is because on the instructions it says that surfaces have to be lightly sanded, which I didn't do. So I'm just going to lightly sand the glass and then um, fill the gaps with some cork so that the uh, second attempt epoxy won't glue to the screen itself, which is what's in these gaps. And now uh, just try again. <laughs> It's hot. <laughs> okay, right, so that's working nicely. Okay, so it's off at last. Um, that was definitely not as clean as I would have liked it to have been, but hopefully the panel um, is undamaged, so we'll We'll see in a bit uh, whether it still works. So I'm just heating up the screen and digitizer here to soften the adhesive again. 
and it needs to be nice and hot. Okay, so that's ouch, a bit too hot to touch. But I've got to work quickly before it cools down. So I'm just using a fishing line here just to separate the screen from the shattered glass digitizer that it's stuck to. Come on, don't get stuck. It feels like it's gotten stuck on a piece of glass or something. Oh, it's still going. Right, almost there. Hooray! Okay, there we go. Right, so... Uh, so that looks like a horrendous mess. So um, we'll see whether it once I've taken all this stuff off, whether it's actually still works and is still in good condition. Okay guys, I've got some bad news. Um, I've just noticed that um, on this corner, part of the screen has broken away. Uh, it looks like this must have been just stuck too hard to uh, the digitizer for whatever reason. And the same thing on the other side, um, just here, you can see that there's a, a little bit of glass still um, attached to the screen uh, very strongly and there is sort of like a, a crack, there we go, between it and the rest of the control thing. So this controls the screen, so to be honest I think that's, that's the screen done for. Yeah, I, I've just removed this uh, corner glass and it looks like they've actually dabbed a, a small amount of glue directly onto the screen, like a different type of glue and that must be just much stronger and not really affected by heat. So I have no idea why they would do that. Uh, it could be to stop people repairing them, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if it weren't for that, this would have worked. Oh dear. <laughs> well, I think it's pretty safe to say that that isn't working properly. So that didn't quite work out as hoped, but what I've done instead is gone and ordered a replacement screen with the chassis. Um, this was £40 from eBay. Uh, it's a used part, so it means that it has the original screen, not a cheap replica, so it's ideal, and it looks like new. Um, so another benefit of this is that rather than replacing the screen, um, it's just the chassis, so I'm going to be transferring the motherboard and things, and that's much easier. So it's just a case of putting the old components into the new chassis. Uh, this has to be done very carefully, so nothing is missed. And uh, here's the motherboard itself. So this is essentially the heart of the phone, where the operating system resides and everything is processed. And uh, this can just fit in like so. And then uh, it can be followed up with the camera and then the battery. And once the back has been stuck back on, it's ready to test. Will it work? Yes. <laughs> Great. So there we have it. Fixed and fully working at last. Now it's time to return it to its rightful owner. There he is. Hello. I have something for you. Um, there you go. <laughs> it worked then. Well, better not drop it. So uh, I think that's it for this video. I hope you've found it interesting. Uh, it's certainly been quite a, a pff, interesting one for me because I didn't know where it was going to go. And in conclusion, I have to say, you know, that it's just not worth it. And that if you're gonna rep repair a phone, just replace the screen and digitize it. Right, so uh, I'm Matt, you've been watching DIY Perks, and I hope I see you next time. Goodbye for now.